A legend doesn't necessarily need a second act, but Jane Pauley isn't your run-of-the-mill legend. She's reimagined her own life after hosting The Today Show, NBC's Dateline, and her own talk show. And she's met hundreds of people over 50 who are finding a new direction and discovering that 50 and beyond may just be the start of something big. Polly stopped by recently to talk about her new book, Your Life Calling, Reimagining the Rest of Your Life. Jane, welcome. It's such a pleasure to have you here with us. Oh, you're us. so kind. Thank you. Now, Jane, your book, Your Life Calling, what's it about? I'm a baby boomer, a leading edge baby boomer. Um, we are of great diversity. Michelle Obama is a baby boomer, celebrated her 50th, and I realized she was two weeks old when the Beatles appeared on and the Ed Sullivan Show. So we have great diversity, but what we have in common is a birthright that having been born into the world in great numbers, we change everything. We did not reinvent reinvention. We did not start the trend of people living longer, more productive, healthier lives later on in midlife. We're the first generation, however, to get a heads up. And once we finish redefining what later midlife means, and though we still use the word retirement, for instance, we mean something different. Every generation that comes after us will look at midlife, the later phases that I'm in, and still being creative, productive, engaged, and think about life quite, quite differently. So once again, you know, boomers just by moving through life together in mass <laughs> are, are really, it's a paradigm shift. Really, is it just the big number of boomers? Is it just the fact that we live longer? Or is it the fact that we boomers just don't want to get off the stage? Well, <laughs> it, it's not, it, yeah. <laughs> um, but the reality is we don't want to get off the stage because we are, uh, uh, we're more vital. I, there's a story in the book of a guy whose reinvention was discovering softball. He's a, a social yeah. psychologist. His expertise is recreation. He had no recreation in his life. But Richard Luker has data uh, that shows that people who are 50 today are more vital in their outlook and more in interest in staying active than people who were 50 10 years ago. So much is changing. And if you've got this vitality and this new outlook, to be 50, 60, 70 is to want to remain engaged in the, in the world, whether it's of work or whatever it is, in a different way than your parents and grandparents. Well, how do you respond to those who say, and you know that some are saying it, that uh, a reinvention, personal reinvention is a luxury? <laughs> That only that the people the who have money yeah. can afford to do. Um, that's if you assume that your reinvention is, you know, I'd, I'd like to start a company mm -hmm. and I will fund it with the money. No. Um, it, it, just because you have, find, does that mean that, that no one else gets to use their imagination? That no one else gets to think about how do I want to stay creative? You, you do work with what you've got. Uh, as I go forward in life, I'm going to be recycling through reinvention. Probably my next one or the one after that, I'm not going to be invited to talk to you about it on television. Mm -hmm. uh, you work with what you have. I may have a health diagnosis ahead of me. I, my, but my attitude toward the future is I will work with what I've got to the best of my ability and stay creative, active, and, and engaged. Now, now this, the, the idea of personal reinvention has been a passion of yours well, for, for a long time. You were talking about it in 1990 in a commencement speech, long before it was popular. Why? Um, I've never been a person with hobbies, much less passions, and self-consciously so, because I would be interviewed as a young woman on television. You know, what are you doing in your spare time? And I'd kind of go blank. Hmm. As I've traveled with your life calling, I have heard in a 63-year-old woman's voice, a woman speaking with passion. And it's been a revelation to me. I th and I think the message I draw from this just personal example is that sometimes when we're looking for that, in, that incohate feeling of something is missing or wanting more, not knowing what it is, uh, most of us don't have a, a blank to fill in under passion. Mm -hmm. would have, would, great that we did, but I do think that sometimes that thing that is missing is something we just hadn't noticed yet. Now, are all these stories in the book, uh, do they come from the pieces that you've been doing for four years at the Today Show in partnership with the AARP, I believe? We've done uh, 37 stories in the, it was originally Your Life Calling, which I invented, uh, rebranded mm -hmm. by AARP Life Reimagined, which is mm -hmm. uh, frankly more accessible. Um, 
37 stories so far, not all of them in the book, because I couldn't put them all in the book. So we, we, we chose, I don't know, 20, more than two dozen, plus um, stories that I, of people I've never met before, uh, my stories in it, uh, my sister, yeah. friends, anything that, that wove in in a way that was uh, a new insight, a different way of looking at this idea that we're talking about. Is there a thread, one thread besides change, that ties all these stories together? Um, I guess there are several messages. Uh, one misconception I like to correct is that when you're at my age, you got to get it right, that there's one perfect self and that at this point in life, you've, you've got to discover your, your as if you're your inner soulmate. We have multiple selves. Yeah. We are entitled to multiple passions. Pick one and make the most of it. Uh, but I think the fundamental message I, I, I found in a headline in the Washington Post years ago, clipped it, saved it. Inspiration is everywhere, but you have to be looking. Yeah, be looking. You looking is a big looking. Word. Yeah, yeah. So, Recently, you were at the Today Show. You hosted it again with, <laughs> with Matt Brian Lauer Gumbel. and Brian Gumbel was there, too. How was that? Back to the future moment. Um, fortunately, it was not a heavy news day, uh, so Matt did the heavy lifting to the degree that it was. It was mostly, you know, re reunion and, 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 and fun. Um, it, 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 to reconnect with people, because then, then I went out on the road with the book, and it was, it was so great seeing you and Brian. And you remember how morning television is an intimacy in television uh, that uh, there's nothing like it. So no urge to re reinvent yourself as a morning uh, host? Um, I sure could yet. not. It, the, the cycle, <laughs> you know, we used to talk about how news cycles were speeding up. It's so fast now, there is no news cycle. I don't think I have the stamina uh, to do what morning television is today. Okay. But it was fun to do for a day. <laughs> it's been a great pleasure. Thank you so much. Oh, and thank, thank you for you. your book. You're so kind.